Good morning on the seventh Sunday after Epiphany. You are listening to a live broadcast from Lutheran Memorial Church in Pierre. Lutheran Memorial is located at the corner of Nicollet and Prospect, just west of the state capitol. The pastors at Lutheran Memorial are Craig Wexler and Young Chung. Special music will be provided this morning by the Sunday School children. Today's organist is Lori Kennecke. Hymn numbers this morning are 783, 631, 708, and 604. Our service is about to begin, and our opening hymn is Praise and Thanks and Adoration, number 783 in the ELW Red Hymnal. at Lutheran Memorial Church. We are so glad to have you with us for worship. I have several announcements. First of all, Pastor Craig is coming uh, this Thursday, and if you follow this one, uh, we will know. I think he is around in the tomb, yeah, in Jerusalem. Yeah, and just pray for him. And also, uh, there will be a funeral service this Tuesday at 11 o'clock for Shala Garrett. Rado Peterson passed away on Friday. Okay, and then this time I invite Brett for table talk. Sunday School Sings is not me, for those of you worried about that um, this morning. I'm up here for the Relay for Life team. We're selling daffodils again this year. I was hoping we made the bulletin, and we did in a big way. Um, full color, this is the most spring I've seen since last spring. Um, we're taking orders. You can get a hold of us uh, on the church Facebook page here at the church office. Uh, my email or phone, I'll be selling out in the narthex after... Uh, church this morning, ten dollars a bunch. We'll have the, we need the orders in by Thursday, so this is kind of the last day to order them right here at church. But we'll be taking orders uh, through telephone, Facebook, uh, what have you, up until Thursday. The Thursday after that, then Lori and some of the ladies will be getting together to package them up for pickup here at the church, or we'll deliver if you've got a, a substantial amount of them that need to be brought out. But. We've had a Relay for Life team uh, at church since I can't remember when, and it's, uh, it's been a wonderful thing, uh, I think. I'm glad to be a part of it myself, and uh, if you'd join us by buying a bunch of daffodils, we'd appreciate it. Clyde Junt, if you're listening online, I'll be down to get an order from you sometime this week. Thank you.
most the most for that. We When we are dead in our processes, God made us alive together with Christ, nearly the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us and we are here to be in your soft love. We are here to be in your and we are here to share hope, bear for kindness, and we seek to know, to understand, and to love you. City. This time I invite in this good kids. <laughs>
Okay, so here is a heat source of heat. Okay, and then it, it powders made J cup. And do you know how many uh, Jacob has sons? Jacob has 12 sons. Mm -hmm. Do you think Jacob is a sad or happy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, do you think he is happy or sad? He's a happy, right? Because his father gave him beautiful coat. It looks like a very nice one, right? But here is uh, his brothers, 11 brothers. Are they sad or angry so happy? I think they look like very sad or even angry. Do you know why? Because his, brother, his father loved Joseph very much. And then his father gave a beautiful cup to only Joseph. So they didn't get any like a spot. So they started to hate Joseph. And also Joseph said, I had a dream and then in the dream you all bowed to me. I'm the best person. I'm the greatest. So his brother even hated Joseph more, and then they sold him to Egypt. And then here Joseph was taken into another country, and then as a slave. And in the uh, Egypt, even though he didn't do anything wrong, he was thrown into jail. So he was very sad, but. He didn't forget God. He always remembered God's love. And also, God didn't forget him. So one, one day, in the, the king of Egypt, Pharaoh had a dream. And they don't know what it means. But Joseph was able to interpret King's dream. And he said, in this country, there will be a lot of food for seven years. And then, after that, there will be no food at all. So, and then he said, King, we need to prepare for the family. And the king was so pleased with Joseph. And then King made Joseph the most powerful man, second only to Pharaoh himself. Because even though Joseph was uh, deeply wounded and unhappy, but he always remembered God's love. And also, God remembered him. So this time, I want to say, at your home or at school, mm -hmm. yeah. so, and then you need to be kind to your sisters and brothers and your friends. Okay, so, and then if someone uh, is not uh, kind to you, but still you need to be kind to the person. Okay? That's God wants us to do. Okay, let's fall the hands, pray together. Lord, help me to be kind to my sisters, my brothers, and friends. We pray in your name. Everyone say amen. Okay. Okay, now please stand and the hands up and turn around. Repeat after me. The peace of Christ be with you always. All people say, okay, let's show God peace with everyone.
first reading is from Genesis chapter 45, verses 3 through 11 and 15. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here, for God sent me before yourselves, because you sold me from poor here. For God sent me and before you to present life and for the famine, for the famine has been in the land these two years. And the, there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me before here, but God, he has made me a father to the Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all land of Egypt. Hurry and go to my father and say to him, thus says you, your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all the brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 37, verses 1 through 11, 39 through 40. Please read responsibly. responsibly. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, who shall give you heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. The Lord will make your mental as clear as the light and the light of justice like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not be provoked, it leads only to evil. For evil, evil doers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while, the wicked shall be no more. Even if you search out their place, they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. <clears throat> Stronghold in the time of trouble. You, O oh Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them because in, your, in you they seek refuge. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 35, 38, and 42 through 50. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as far as far for what you, know, you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, but it is raised a spiritual body. 
If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a living, a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the, from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are the dust. And as is the man of the heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the <clears throat> According to Luke, the read, the read from chapter 6, verse 27 through 38. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give it to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. Next screen. What is the craziest dream you ever had that you still remember? There are some, right? Yeah. I know one man who had a crazy dream of becoming a main character in a play called Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Court. Have you ever seen this play? I saw this play in 2016 at Orpheum Theatre in Twin Cities. The story is based on Joseph's story, found in the book of Genesis. It tells about one man's dream. The dream seemed too crazy to come true. So today we will find out if 
his dream came true or not. Today's story is not just a just a story. It's far more than that. So to understand a big picture of the story, I want to give you a background. In Genesis 11, God called Abraham to go to Canaan. So as you see on the map, Abraham traveled from his hometown, which is number one, and then go up to number two, Haran, and go down to Canaan. When he arrives in Canaan, God makes a covenant with him. He says, I will bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And then your descendants will possess this land in Canaan. As you see the family tree, Abraham has two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. But God's covenant carried out through Isaac and then Jacob. Do you know how many sons Jacob had? Anyone? How many sons Jacob? Twelve, right? Yeah. And then uh, the twelve sons became twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. <laughs> Let's see, now get into Joseph's story. Jacob loved Joseph the most. Joseph was his favorite. So one day, Jacob gave Joseph a beautiful coat. Does anyone recognize this picture? Have you seen this one? It's from our church. If it's next to my office, and you see this picture on the wall. Yeah. And then, so this made Joseph's brother feel bad, even angry. To make worse, Joseph said, I dreamed, and all you bowed down to me, and I'm the greatest, I'm the best. And then his dream made him feel good about himself. His brother hated him even more, and then they attempted to kill him. But they sold him to slave traders, and the traders took him to Egypt. Let's see what happened to Joseph in Egypt. Joseph was taken to Potiphar, an officer of the king Pharaoh. The God was with him. So he found the favor in his master's eyes. Potiphar put Joseph in charge of everything in his house except his wife. One day, Potiphar's wife asked Joseph to sleep with her. But Joseph refused because he knew that would be wrong in God's eyes. <laughs> However, she accused Joseph. Even though he had done nothing wrong, he was thrown into jail. While he was in jail, the king, cupbearer, and baker also was thrown into jail. And one day, they told about their dreams, but they didn't know what they mean. But Joseph was able to explain about their dream. And another night, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, also had a dream. No one knew what the dream meant. And at this time, the cupbearer who was in the jail with Joseph, remembered Joseph. And also he remembered the interpretation of their dreams. So the king called Joseph, asked about his dreams. And then also God with Joseph. So he was able to do, explain about king's dream. And he telling him about what is coming about. He said, there will be seven years of great abundance in this country. However, after that, there will be another seven years of great famine. 
So he also tells him about what should be done. And then the king, Pharaoh, was so pleased with Joseph. And he made him the most powerful man in the country, just the second only to Pharaoh himself, to prepare Egypt for famine. Now back home, Joseph's brothers had run out of food. So Jacob sent his sons to Egypt to get food. He came and met before the most powerful man. His brothers did not know the man was Joseph. But Joseph knew who they were. Joseph's dream about his brothers bowing down to him was coming true. Was coming true. And then Joseph revealed himself to his brothers. He says, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold me here. When they saw it was Joseph, they were afraid because they knew they had done wrong. We could imagine how terrified they were. Now Joseph suddenly punished them, but he said, do not be afraid, for you sold me here. Even though Joseph was wounded deeply by his brothers, he forgave them, giving up his right to punish them. Though it was in Joseph's power to repay them, he didn't, because he knows that reconciliation is possible only through forgiveness. This story tells us that even in the most broken family, that forgiveness and healing are possible. Is there someone you wounded who wounded you deeply? Is there someone you need to forgive? If you are struggling with forgiving them, you are not alone. It is not easy to forgive. But begin with acknowledging how much God has forgiven you. That helps you to forgive those who wounded you. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 22 shows us that even though Joseph had not received the promises given to his ancestors, but he believed someday his descendants would possess the land Canaan, the promised land. So he made mention of Exodus, Exodus of the Israelite. So that's his faith, even though he did not see, but he believed that would come true. Do you think God causes things to happen, especially bad things? Here Joseph states exactly how he understood the events that brought him to Egypt. He said, do not be afraid for you sold me here, but for God sent me here. It was not you who sent me here, but God. Joseph makes the same statement to his brothers years later after their father's death. He said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish it, what is now being done for the saving of many lives. Joseph does not attribute the brother's simple action to God. But God did not make them sin. Joseph, however, affirmed that God was able to use those simple actions for his own purposes. The brothers did evil things, but God turned it to good. He had a clear understanding that what his brothers has done to him is evil. Also, he had a clear understanding that God was at work and God is in control. How do you see 
be God's sovereign hand at work throughout this story. How do you see God's hand in work, in your own life? When Joseph's brother sold him, they thought that the end of Joseph's life and his dream was gone. They thought they killed his dream, but that was wrong. That was wrong. God had a great plan for Joseph's life, and even when it looked like everything had gone wrong, God would use it to help out the dream come true. So, is there someone going on in your life today that is hard for you to understand? Take it to the Lord and trust His hand. God is in control even when it seems like your world is spinning out of control. God is working behind the scenes. Are you focused on God? What are you focused on your circumstances? What are the situations in which you find yourself? We may not always understand what is happening to us, but God is always in control. Remember, God is always in control in your life. Uh, this story, Joseph's story, reminds me of one man who was accused and killed. The man is Jesus, who forgives us again and again. So let's say uh, John chapter 3, verse 16 together, remembering God's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. This is the message. This is what we believe. Amen. Let's sing our hymn of day.
process of this is the world of perfectly. I believe in God. for a father in our according to their needs. God, our peace, we desire peace on earth and bring before you our prayers for the nations of the world. Inspire all leaders to work for justice, 
protect those who suffer injustice, comfort those who live in fear. Lord, in your mercy, God, our strength, we bring before you our prayers for all our sick, especially Bob, Judy, Rod, Myron, Jean, Rana, Bill, Sarah, Darcy, Colleen, Mike, David, Curtis, Brian, Kenna, Claire, Wyatt, Jared, Mary, Perry, and Chris. Be present in their sufferings as surgery or during recovery. We also pray for the family and friends of Charlotte Garrett and Raza Peterson as they mourn for the loss of their loved one. Comfort them and give them your peace. Lord, in your mercy. For this congregation, help us to trust you and seek your will for our lives and ministries at Lutheran Memorial Church. Bless the newly baptized one, Emma Rose Butler. Let her grow in wisdom and stature. Help her parents raise her in faith. Let her sponsors and congregation support her as they promised her during baptism. For Pastor Craig, bless him and guide him as he is on his holy land pilgrimage. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, deliver us to your and teach us to pray. This concludes the Sunday morning's worship service from Luther Memorial Church in Pierre. You can worship with us in person each Sunday morning at 9 a.m., or you can join us on Saturday evenings at 5.30 p.m. for our modern contemporary worship service called Saturday Night Alive. An additional worship service is provided on Wednesday evenings at 6.15 p.m. Whatever your schedule is, you're invited to worship with us. If you can't join us in person, you can listen to our live radio broadcast at 9 a.m. each Sunday morning by tuning into KGFX AM 1060, FM 107.1, or on the internet at drgnews.com by clicking on Listen Live. We also provide a live video stream of our services on our Facebook page. You can also watch televised recorded broadcasts for our worship service each Wednesday at 4 and 6 p.m. on Hawaii Cable Channel 8 and 608. If you tune into our radio or televised services regularly and would like to follow the service more closely, we would be happy to send you our weekly bulletin. You can also order our hymnal. Just contact the church office at 224-8608 or write to Luther Memorial Church, 320 East Prospect, Pierce, South Dakota, 57501. So now on behalf of pastors... Wexler and Chung, and the Congregation of Luther Memorial, we extend our prayers to you and yours for God's care and guidance throughout the coming week.